Hi, I'm Ozer Mojidi. Today, I like to uh, make a link between 8th March, the International Women's Day, the International Socialist Women's Day, and what's going on in the region, in the Middle East and in North Africa. I'll explain later why I'm making this link and why it is important to make this link. For the past two months, the whole region has become such a source of inspiration for all of us, for people all over the world, for any oppressed section of the society, any human being whose heart beats for a better society, for a better world, for a society free of hunger, free of poverty, free of discrimination, free of injustice, free of corruption, free of oppression, a society which guarantees freedom, equality and prosperity for all its citizens. It doesn't matter where you live, whether you live in Europe, in USA, whether you live in New Zealand, Australia, South America, in the Middle East, everyone with these, asp these aspirations is glued to the TV set. Watching every action, following every news. They feel your joy, they feel your anxieties, they feel your worries. They laugh with you, they cry with you, they shout with you. It's incredible what's happening. 2011, it's going to be an unforgettable year in the history of mankind. Never in the history of mankind we have had such events. One country after the other, people rise against the dictatorships, people rise against corruption, people rise against oppression, people rise against discrimination, people come into the street brave, demanding their rights, demanding their basic rights, and no one, and no one can push them back. Look at Libya. This crazy man who, who knows what's going on through his head, I think he's a psychopath, believe me. He's one of those cases that psychologists and psycho psych psychoanalysts have to really, really study. The person who comes and talks of himself as a third person, Muammar Gaddafi is one of you, there's something wrong up here. But this psychopath have reigned over a country with six million population, with terror, with intimidation, with force for 42 years and now people say enough is enough enough is enough they've come to the streets and they're taking over city after city what we see in parts of Libya is a dual power where a community, a society, is neither in the hands of the government nor in the hands of the people. Still there is this balance of power going on, but that means the balance of power has shifted towards the people. And that's what is important. That's what is important. I know the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Interior, they're all resigning and they say they're joining the people, but we have to be careful. We have to be careful. They are part and parcel of that regime. They have worked closely with Muammar Gaddafi to suppress you, to oppress you, to reign terror over the society. We should not trust them. We should not trust them just as people in Tunisia don't trust anybody who was in the government with Zainal Abedin Ben Ali, and they're still resisting, and they're still fighting. Just as part
part of the people in Egypt do not trust the army. Unfortunately, some people had put too much trust in the army. But listen, what happened? When the workers came into the sea, when they made strikes, the army said to Mubarak, no, it's enough, you have to go. It's not all about you, it's about the regime, it's about the class, it's about keeping this regime, keeping this class in power. So now you're staying in power would damage that. You go away, we'll take over. They take over, they say, we're the people, go home from Tahrir Square. People start going and what they say, the first thing they do, they threaten the workers. If they don't go back home, go to work, they're going to be crushed. And sometimes I think it's so incredible, this whole class struggle that we all learned from Marx, from Com Communist Manifesto, how it has become so apparent in this movement. As soon as the workers say, we want just a tiny bit of more, more pay, the army is there to clamp down. And all talk about human rights is just gone. And they still say there's no class struggle. This is the first lesson of class struggle we're seeing. What's happening in that region is that all that people who were the working people, who were the people who made the society run, who worked for the society to run, who made wealth for Mubarak and Zain al Abidin and the army and the generals and all those surrounding them as a class, those people who were humiliated every second of the day, they've taken matters in their own hands. They've taken matters in their own hands and that's how everyone is confused. Look at it. Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, ya Yemen, Bahrain, Jordan, Algeria, Iran has been like that for the past, if not 30 years, for the past 10 years. Two years ago, people in Iran came to the streets in millions. The regime clamped down on the protests and demonstrations with utmost brutality. Things were going on, never stopped, but you also have been the source of inspiration. But last week, when people came to the street in Tehran and other big cities, they said, Mubarak, Zainul Abedin, now it's Seyyid Ali's turn. Who is Seyyid Ali? Khamenei, the so-called supreme leader. Now, I might have just gone too far from the main theme, which was 8th March, but I needed to do that to say why I'm linking these things together. Okay, we have a whole region boiling. We have a whole region who's raised. We have a whole region who's working hard, struggling with solidarity and unity for their demands. How hard they worked to make you and us separated, divided us into sects, into boxes, so we cannot unify and we cannot solidar be, be solidar uh, feel solidarity for each other. Iraq is one of those most tragic cases in the history of mankind. See what they've done to you. See what, what, I, what we call the state terrorist pole that is US and the NATO. See what they have done to Iraq. They've destroyed a society. They've destroyed a country. They've made a big symmetry of that country. They try to make you feel you're Sunni, you're Shia, you're Arab, you're Kurd, you're Assyrian, you're Christian. They did that. They did that. Who did it? Actually, 
no matter how much the state terrorists, which is USA, Israel, and the West, fight and have a uh, hostility towards the Islamic terrorism, which is Islamic regime at the head of it, Hezbollah, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, all of those. Doesn't matter how much they fight against each other, they have one aim in common. If people are divided into different nationalities, different religions, different genders, different sex, different languages, what have you, then it's easier to rule them, it's easier to exploit them, it's easier to create a hell for people and a heaven for the capitalists. And that's what they've done to Iraq. But look at it, yesterday people came to the streets of Baghdad, they wanted better life, they wanted better economic situation, they asked for better services, they were against, raging against corruption, and they wanted, I just want to summarize that for all of us, freedom, equality, and prosperity for all. The reporters will ask them, are they Shia Sunni? No, we're all together. Oh my God, I said God. That was the best moment after a long time, to see how, when people move, when people move to make a better world, when people have in revolutionary aspirations, when people are solidified in a movement together, how they can overcome all those barriers that the dominant ideology imposes upon us. Now, why 8th March? I have very little time left for 8th March. 8th March, it's not only Women's Day, which means only women have to do something. 8th March has a much more important and broader significance. What is 8th March? It symbolizes the equality of humankind, the justice and a better world that could come about by getting rid of this order system we have and replacing it with what I call a just society, a real society that can create freedom and real equality, not just legal equality, not just uh, human rights uh, kind of uh, um, I forgot the word, um, that they talk about like equality, but real equality, that's socialism. That's why 8th March was chosen as a day that would represent and symbolizes the struggle of humankind for gender equality by the socialists in 1910. And still this day has this significance. And now in that region that will come from, it has even more significance. Why? Because Islamists have made one of their main victims women to abolish even that little rights women have by the Islamists, to impose upon them veil which is the symbol and tool of their servitude and oppression. Gender apartheid, which is the main column of a re society that's taken back 10 centuries. We need to celebrate 8th March even more strongly than we did 50 years ago. In Iran, 8th March has become a very important day exactly because of that. I'm just going to give you a, a phrase by Marx, Karl Marx. It's, he says, the measure of freedom of a society is the measure of women's freedom. If you look at that, and we look at our own societies, we see how by putting women down and by supposedly making men masters of these women, men who have no rights, who have no uh privileges, but they have one privilege to uh, tramp over the uh, women's 
rights, they divide us, even in our own family, even under the roof of our own homes, they divide us. So let's, let's celebrate 8 March this year. 8 March 2011 should be a day of solidarity and unity of all the oppressed people in the region, in the Middle East, in North Africa, for freedom, for equality, for, solid, uh, for uh, prosperity. And our comrades in Europe and in the West and other parts of the world, they will join us. They are, they are, they are admiring your fights. They're admiring your braveness. They're admiring your resistance. They're all raising their hands for you. I'm watching with a lot of enthusiasm to see the outcome of your struggles and your sacrifices. If we can, if we can make 8 March 2011 a day of solidarity, a day of unity against oppression, against poverty, against discrimination, against injustice, against state corruption, and for freedom, equality and prosperity, we have taken a big step towards real freedom and real equality. We're all together in it. Doesn't matter where we are born, in Iran, in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Yemen, in Germany, in France, in England, in Sweden, in US, the oppressed are together and they are going to raise against the dominant order dominant ideology for freedom, equality, and prosperity. Long live 18.